Hi guys, Shopper back once again with another mint in box. And as you can see, we've got one. Oh my goodness. I don't even know where to begin. I'll be honest. When I was told that I would be receiving one of these by the lovely people over at Norton, I didn't actually believe it. <laughs> And then it showed up. And I still didn't believe it. It felt like Christmas, to be honest, but. Oh. Started from the bottom, and now we're here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to introduce to you the Lego Ghostbusters Firehouse Headquarters, item number 75. 827. Oh my gosh, this is a beast. I can't even lift it. <laughs> Still, this this weighs like a small dog. Oh my. <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> this is gonna take me a while, so excuse my rambling because <laughs> I'm just so giddy that I have this opportunity to do this. So yeah. The Firehouse Headquarters, the follow-on from the LEGO Ideas Ecto-1 set that came out around 2014, some sometime there, and LEGO, in their ingenuity, did this as well, as a follow-up, and it's everything you could possibly want it to be, it's got everything you could possibly want of it. So let me give you a quick rundown. It is for ages 16 plus, which I don't think will be much of an issue considering, well, I'm 28 and <laughs> I remember Ghostbusters just fine. Anything younger than 16 probably won't know what Ghostbusters is until the movie comes out, which hopefully will be good. This set has 4,634 pieces. That is the most I've ever reviewed in one set. Hell, it might be more Lego pieces than I've reviewed in a year previously. So, <laughs> yeah, there's nine minifigures, and you can see those down here, but you'll be getting a Bigger look at those, and you can purchase this from either in store at any of the Lego branches across the UK or the world, in fact. And as it turns out in the UK, it costs $274.99. I'll let that sink in. $275 pounds I can't I can't I can't even fathom spending that much on Lego in one go for one thing <laughs> that's ludicrous it really is and I was sent one to review Hence why I'm in the ghetto. I went full Ghostbusters 2 for this review. I'm going to review the heck out of it. So let's dig into the box. Let's have a good look at what you get inside this behemoth. Okay, so opening the box, we already have an indication of the sheer scale of the task I'm about to undertake. So you get a nice big base plate. Two massive boxes, which are about the size of the box that I got the Harvest of Fear set in. So that should give you an indication for that. There are a ton of bags, some of which have duplicate numbers on, so look. Two thirteens, and 
they go up to 14. I... <laughs> I'm going to be at this all week. What am I doing? I think I've bitten off more than I can chew, ladies and gentlemen. And just take a look at this gorgeous instruction booklet. I mean, that looks nice enough, barring having the stickers in the way, but look how thick it is. That's one... That's just one instruction booklet. Look how thick it is. You could kill someone with that. Usually when it comes to this kind of thing, I would go through the building process, essentially step by step, but I can already see that this is going to be you know, all falling off the table. This is going to be quite the endeavour. I believe that's where you... Hey, I found Vinkman's face in bag nine. <laughs> it's gonna, this is going to take me a while. I'll see you guys in a bit. Okay, I am currently six hours into this build and I've only just finished the bottom four of the firehouse and that doesn't include all the furnishings and such but early impressions are that this is a very intricate build lots of making sure that the walls are sturdy You've got the doors that can open that I believe can fit the Ecto-1 Lego set through. We'll slide this round and show you the opening mechanic. And there is a lot, even just now there's lots of little details. You've got the containment unit there, you've got the boys, lockers, there's even a nice little note board here which says R.I.P. H.R. Which is a nice little nod to Harold Ramis who tragically passed away. Part 3 of the build was finishing this off. So I imagine the next steps will be furnishing this and then continuing the build upwards. So I will see you guys in a bit. As usual we're going to take a look at the minifigures first and we have a motley selection which is great. All of the characters included barring the obvious just generic ghosts all tie into the first movie and give a lot of character to this set. Naturally we have our four boys and from what I've seen they are slightly different to the ones that came with the Ecto-1 playset. I mean, for definite, Peter Vinkman's receding hairline is much more noticeable in this version. And I think there's some minor detailing on both the flight suits and on Egon's head. Just to add a little more character, but I can't really tell any differences apart from that. The Ghost traps are recreated with the warning logos and I've got to say I absolutely dig the Proton Packs. It's such an elegant but simple way of doing them without moulding brand new pieces. It fits with the Lego aesthetic. I mean yeah they could have moulded brand new pieces but no this, they built them. And for these homegrown nuclear accelerators, that's a brilliant little touch. Naturally, they have alternate faces. 
most mostly just terrified versions of what they already have. Except for Venkman, Venkman's more of a stoic face as opposed to this goo covered gross out face which is quite entertaining. And that's it, your lot for them. The two ghosts, they're alright. The kind of headpieces, which is interesting. Not sure if this mold's been used before, but definitely interesting. But let's take a look at some of the other characters. We have the library ghost, which is brilliant to see her. The very first ghost that the Busters encounter is presented here, and with a simple twist of her head. We've got her Frighteners get up, which is pretty nice, though she does come with accessories that you don't really have a place to store. We have the zombie taxi driver from the third act of the movie. Not a lot to him, but it's a nice little addition. I Out of everyone, I think he's probably the weakest minifigure to include though I don't know who they could include otherwise Walter Peck that's what's missing from this lineup Walter Peck isn't here and let's face it the amount of puns I could make about calling him brickless would be amazing but unfortunately if there's one downside to this lineup, it's this guy and Walter Peck's absence. Next up, we've got Dana Barrett, looking like her third act counterpart, and she does come with an alternate face. She's very glam rock, it's very true to the design, and I'm glad they didn't try and ruin this long flowing dress by having those papery additions so that's pretty good Lewis Tully the butt boy of Ghostbusters the man who will if something's gonna go wrong in your neighborhood he's the one who's gonna get it and you've got a quite a nice gormless expression quite unkempt he does have this slightly worried possessed face and just for giggles you can have him with the ridiculous salad bowl on his face brilliant I like him you can add a lot of little character bits with him Slimer Oh, this little pudding. He's an ugly, yes, adorable little spud, isn't he? And he comes with a brock verse. I like him. Nice and translucent as well. Nice counterpoint to Peter. And finally, we come to Janine Melnitz. And I've got to say, <laughs> I'm a big fan of the Annie Potts smirk she has on her face. Just look at that. <laughs> she is properly going to have a go at Lego Egon. Look at her. She's out for it. She's out to get lucky. And the alternate face is a slightly worried expression that I don't think I've seen since the real Ghostbusters cartoon on Janine. So that's neat. That and she's all plaided out in her movie one costume thank god it's not the second movie costume because that was awful but let's move on to the bigger set that's a big twinkie yes indeed this is the completed firehouse headquarters and it is massive it's ridiculously big I mean let's just take a quick measurement shall we the base plate is 15 inches long it is 10 inches wide 
The firehouse itself is 13 and a half inches long, 14 and a half inches tall, and about six and a half inches wide. I have no idea where I'm going to put this thing. <laughs> That's ridiculous, it's massive! The actual build itself is entirely modular, so you can stack it up in sections. And I'm just going to give it a quick turn around here. There's a couple latches on the top here, and we can just open it up. Now I have to say, the level of detail on the interiors is astounding. I mean, just all the little details, all the little nuances of this set are amazing. I mean, we've got, we've got the set of lockers, we've got the central area where Janine sits as the receptionist, we've got the little flappy doors where Venkman almost eats shit jumping over in the first movie. We've got a tiny containment unit which is kind of in line with the movie but, and it's not quite as big as the g real Ghostbusters cartoon version so it works pretty well. The top floor is just a rec area with a little laboratory with details like the Zool monster on the computer screen, there's dart boards, there's all sorts of little science gubbins there's a pool table. On the second floor we have the bedrooms but nothing ever happened in there. We have the common room which has a fantastic little Ghostbusters arcade cabinet. There's a kitchen and a great little nod to Ghostbusters 2 with the mood slime toaster which is great. Um, I love the fact that this set includes not only homages to the first film, but also to the second. On the door we also have a bathroom, which is covered in slime for some particular reason. And we have the dark room from Ghostbusters 2, where Egon and Ray famously get stuck in while developing photographs of Vigo the Carpathian, and Winston has to bust the door down, which is... <laughs> Pretty cool that they included that as well. And of course, you gotta try this pole. The entire set took me around 15 hours to build. That is an astonishing amount of time. And that was spread over a week. Like I'd do a couple hours here and there. And it involved a lot of just building the shell more than anything else, making sure that all the little red bricks aligned, all the little grey studs were in place, making sure that the hinges worked effectively and there was no clearance issues. But honestly, the real the fun for me came with decorating the interior. I mean, I love the outside. The outside is beautiful. But getting into the details of these little Lego Ghostbuster lives was really fun, I have to admit, it was an absolute blast to build. So what is my final verdict? Is this behemoth worth $274.99? And honestly I can't give you the answer for that. This is entirely up to you. For me personally, Ghostbusters was a huge, huge part of my childhood. It was one of the first films that got me interested in filmmaking. I liked the comedy, the science fiction aspect of it. Everything about it was just so timeless and I could watch it over and over again. And yeah, I would buy this. <laughs> This ludicrously large brick built behemoth is worth it to me personally. This isn't a set for children, it's 16 plus. What this set is, is for dads. 
This is a set for guys like me and older who grew up or even encountered the Lego the Ghostbusters movie during their childhood or their formative years and absolutely adored it. This speaks to my inner child, it speaks to my inner Ghostbusters fan and it speaks to me just as a fan of nostalgia. I mean, I can't help but look at it and smile. This is amazing <laughs> and I am so blessed to be given the opportunity to review this and I will adore this for the rest of my life. If you were a fan of Ghostbusters, if you are a fan of Ghostbusters, and especially if you have children and they are going to be excited by the new Ghostbusters movie, regardless of what anyone else thinks, I think this would be a great set to get for any of the dads who watch this, who want to share a ghost busting experience with their children or even if you just want it for yourself it's an amazing piece I absolutely adore it and I definitely think it's worth the money if you absolutely adore Ghostbusters I have to give another massive heartfelt thank you to the wonderful people at Norton and Company and to the Lego Group for giving me this opportunity. I've been Sharpo, this has been the Lego Firehouse Headquarters set. If there's something strange in your neighbourhood, if there's cool toys that need to be reviewed, who are you going to call?